With the seventh anniversary, we've got a new type of unit, the Emblem Hero. And I believe Emblem Heroes are not only meta-defining, but game-defining because of how powerful they are. In this video, I'll be doing an in-depth analysis of Emblem Marth from how his preference weapon and preference skill works, to how opponent 4 works, to how powerful I think he is overall. And of course, I'll be talking about the Emblem Rings and how they will completely change the game forever. Let's start at the top with what are Emblem Heroes? Emblem Heroes are a new unit type that acts similar to other hero types, but they are introduced with a new system called Engaging. Each Emblem Hero comes with a unique effect tied to their Emblem Ring, and only one hero can have this effect active on them at a time on your team. This effect will empower the hero special in some unique way. The only example we have so far is Mars Emblem Ring, which grants a permanent minus one special cooldown to that special in combat. But the special cooldown cannot be reduced to zero. Also, if the hero has a brave attack or brave effect, they will do eight less damage with specials. The Emblem Ring also grants stats depending on how many merges that Emblem Hero has. So a plus zero Emblem Marth will grant no stats, but a plus 10 Emblem Marth will grant plus two to all stats for a total of a 10 stat boost. This has the same value as adding five merges to your hero, typically. This means these Emblem Rings not only grant a unique, extremely powerful effect to your special, but also act as a way to have plus five merges you can equip to any character you want other than the Emblem Hero themselves. Now, the stats aren't the biggest deal as stat inflation is insane at this point, but they are definitely not worthless. With that said, let's analyze Emblem Marth and get an idea of how he works and how powerful he really is. Let's start at the top with Marth's preference weapon, Hero King's Sword. This weapon grants slaying, effective against dragons, and an uncapped amount of stats based off 20% of Marth's visible speed at the start of combat. You also get 40% brave damage reduction, damage reduction halving, and finally a dual phase desperation effect. This is a very powerful weapon and you'll understand why once we go through his full kit. Next up is Mars preference skill, Lodestar Rush. Lodestar Rush is a two cooldown special, technically one due to the Mars inbuilt slaying effect. It boosts damage by 40% of Mars speed when it procs, it has anti-guard, and it also has 40% non-pierceable damage reduction once per combat that does not work with AoEs. Now the interesting effect here is tied to Mars' new B skill, Potent 4. So let's explain that skill as it is very confusing on the first read. In fact, I don't think words are the easiest way to explain it, so let's do a visual example. First and foremost, Potent 4 inflicts speed and defense minus 4 on the foe, and Marth gets 30% damage reduction that does work with AoEs. But the interesting part about Potent is the ability to get an additional fall off attack. So okay, let's start with the basics. In this example, Marth is attacking Medius. Typically, Marth will attack first, and then Medius will retaliate. Then a speed check will occur. Whoever has the higher speed, and if it's 5 or more, they will make a follow up attack. So in this case, Marth will attack again. I'm sure you're aware of how this works. Now, with Potent, we will have the exact same combat. But when Marth wins the speed check, Marth will get an additional follow up attack. So in total, Marth will attack 3 times. Now, when a normal hero uses this skill, the way damage will break down is that Marth will do 100% damage on the first 2 attacks, but only 40% of damage with the third attack. This is the way Potent attempts to balance itself. But there is another scenario where let's say Marth is not so fast, he's not able to double Medius, so he fails the speed check. In this situation, Potent will impose another speed check that is much easier. It will check if Marth is faster than Medius if he has had his speed reduced by 20. And if Marth makes this speed check, he will get a Potent follow-up attack but instead of doing 40% damage, it will be 80% damage. Hopefully this helped clear up how the skill works and also shows off how strong it really is, as it can allow characters to get weaker fall up attacks while losing the normal speed check. It also can allow for an additional hit, which can charge your special, which is really, really powerful. Before we move on, let me explain why Marth is absolutely busted and why Potent 4 works differently on him than any other hero. So this is typically how a hero using Potent 4's combat would look like. Initial attack, Bow counterattacks, then the hero attacks twice. Once at full power, and then one at 40% power. But because of Lodestar Rush, Marth gets full damage on every single attack. So he gets to do 300% damage instead of the normal 240% damage. Which is ridiculously powerful. But wait, there's more. Remember Emblem Marth has a built-in desperation effect. So on player phase, his combat actually looks like this. He will attack, attack again, and proc Lodestar Rush, then attack again, 
all before the opponent gets to hit him a single time. There are not a lot of heroes in the game surviving this. And on enemy phase, Medius will attack, then Marth will load start rush, then attack, and then load start rush again. Emma Marth is insanely strong when it comes to nuking. Overall, I think Marth is going to be one of the best melee nukes in the game, and also one of the best Omni tanks in the game. He has insane firepower and strong defensive damage reduction. He does have a weakness to brave effects even with his brave damage reduction, and his defense and resistance aren't the best at 33 and 27, so that is something to consider as well. He is also weak to sweep effects, as he typically does not want to run no counter disrupt 4 in most situations. When it comes to game modes, Emblem Marth is going to excel in Aetherite's offense and summoner duels as an Omni tank or raid boss, and he also scores really well, so he'll be able to do great in arena as well. With all of that said, let's move on to the discussion of Emblem Rings and the impact they will have on the current game. The same way Fire Emblem Heroes has never been the same since the saves were introduced, I believe Emblem Heroes will do the same. I don't think they will ever be able to go back to what it once was, and the game will significantly shift. Some of the reasons for this, just based off Marth Emblem Ring alone, are that the game is balanced around special cooldown. If you've been playing Fire Emblem Heroes long enough, you will remember they actually shifted the cooldowns of specials in year 1 to make them more in line with how powerful they wanted them to be. Being able to permanently change the specials cooldown by an additional one completely changes the balance of that system again. The power level difference between a 2 cooldown and a 3 cooldown special is big, but the difference between a 3 and 4 cooldown special is massive. Also unlike pulse effects such as on skills like times pulse or infantry pulse, permanent special cooldown changes the consistency of specials. It allows for the hero to spam bigger specials multiple times in combat with special acceleration. It also makes it so that heroes can run 5 cooldown specials much more easily. This means we will see more miracle on tanks and save units. AoE specials will be easier than ever to charge on all movement types, but especially on infantry units, and the state of defensive specials will completely shift. Godlike reflexes is now very easy to loop and is much more difficult to interrupt with effects like guard or defensive tempo. It also means that armors can use defensive specials like Aegis much more consistently, and if they can counterattack, they can easily recharge the specials in between enemy attacks, which will significantly increase their defensive power, especially when you consider Hardy Fighter. This effect combined with Brave Attacks allows for absolutely insane damage output. That is the main reason it reduces special damage as a balancing feature. With all that said, this ring also allows for some insane unit building and opens up a lot more builds to other heroes that typically couldn't use them. For example, heroes who are using inheritable weapons can now have slaying, which is really big. It also allows heroes who didn't have slaying in their preference weapons to use current meta builds, which is really cool. Overall, Emblem Mars Ring is extremely powerful and versatile. Also, remember, you can only have this ring equipped to one character per team, and SDS, most likely one per brigade, so definitely keep that in mind. Outside of Mars Ring itself, I think Emblem Rings are the future of the game. Teams will build around which units use which Emblem Ring, and unit builds will massively change based off Emblem Rings as well. Meta matchups at the highest level of play can completely be shifted based off these Emblem Rings too which means the meta will be much more volatile, but also really interesting for us hardcore players. On the more negative side or business side, Emblem Rings are absolutely a new way for intelligence systems to push players to summon even more. These heroes affect the game on a level more than any other hero type has before. Duo and Harmonic heroes were essentially 6 stars, but a lot of their power was self-contained. Their Duo and Harmonic skills could be ridiculously powerful, but typically they were moments or bursts of power and the overall value of the hero revolved around how good that hero was, Emblem heroes are different. Not only will they have value based off how good they themselves are as a hero, but also based off how good their Emblem ring effect is. And that value goes beyond a normal unit's value, because it can be equipped by any other hero. It really opens a floodgate to a new level of power, but also complexity, which is something the game has already been struggling with. These rings also have an additional layer of value due to the fact they can essentially give plus 5 merges to any hero, which is a free stat boost. And they also dramatically increase the value of Fey Pass, because it seems Emblem heroes are only available on Legendary and Mythic banners. And we all know how rough it can be to summon the exact hero you want on one of those banners without a spark. The other thing I have to bring up is how often these heroes will be available or released. It is possible these heroes will share a release rotation with Legendary and Mythics, which means we'd only get 4-5 to five new Emblem Heroes a year, but it is also possible we get a new one every month. We will have to wait and see. 
But if it is the former, then these heroes will be even more valuable, as there won't be enough of them to have your team fully equipped. Depending on the game mode, your team typically consists of 4-6 heroes, which means on an optimized team, you need 4-6 emblem rings. And that's not even discussing Aetherade's defense, which is 7 heroes, or Summerdoll's S, which is technically 20 heroes. With all that said, that is my analysis on Emblem Marth and Emblem Rings, and how I think the game will never be the same. I am partially extremely excited to see how the game changes and what kind of crazy effects each Emblem hero will bring. I am also a bit scared considering Intelligence System's past track record. But now I'd love to hear from all of you, what do you think of Emblem Rings and Emblem Marth? Are you excited for all the crazy shenanigans coming, or are you more afraid than ever? Drop a comment down below letting me know. As always, I'd like to thank all my members for their constant support. And if you haven't yet, go check out my Fae channel reaction. I popped off on a whole different level. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch you all later with more Fire Heroes.